through. That's what I could get you guys all to record or say yes to that. And then we're going to. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all for um, attending today. Uh, exciting things. I, I get this message more and more uh, from doctors that are not doing wonderful with um, with with the knees, and it tends to be one of the the, the biggest um, complaints that I'm seeing with our doctors. Like, hey, I'm having patients drop out because. Uh, their knees are getting worse or we're not getting uh, the best results with knees. And I want you guys to think about this. So if you've been struggling with chronic knee pain, uh, then you might want to stick around, right? And this is the type of emails I get. Um, and it says, my knee is sore this afternoon. It was a struggle just to make it upstairs. And the doctor responded, and this is one of the doctors were coaching. Well, sometimes that's what we see about 10 to 15% of the time. Has it been any better today? It woke me up several times in the night. I can do steps today, but it hurts. I've had pain on the left side of my knee now and on the back side of the, my knee behind where it had been bothering me. So, you know, this is how it starts. I, you, we feel the question like this. Um, and then... As we dug a little deeper, we found out there was something different, right? It's not the rebound effect. So what you see here is she asked about chronic knee pain that really only hurts with lots of walking or going up and down store stairs. So she tried a session yesterday and she shared with me that those thoughts that it was worse today. And one of our guys in the soft wave you said typical rebound effect when she comes back in decrease the energy by one or two points that should help reduce that from happening is she autoimmune and i said it's all about creating realistic expectations informing them about how important it is to stick to the care plan that we've recommended we tell every patient about how we're flushing out that inflammation. So I also thought it was inflammation at first, but when we dug a little deeper, um, and again, we also tell them we were looking for relief for the next 15 to 20 hours. Um, and that's that, that wow factor. So she didn't have any, any immediate relief. And I think that's an issue. She didn't feel worse until she tried the stairs. We do a great job setting the expectations, but this was a little different than I've seen before, which is why I'm asking. And I said, how old is she? And she said, 63. And I realized right there, if a patient doesn't get immediate relief, there might be something more serious going on. Remember, 90% of patients see positive changes as we flush out that inflammation that's been lying stagnant in around that joint space. So it's good to understand the, you know, the structure. Let's think about the anatomy, where the pain is coming from. Plus this type of patient that gets worse a couple days after ES, you know, soft wave. In the last seven years and treating tens of thousands of patients with this technology and mapping out patients' feet and legs and joints. The first time I ever saw this was with a lady who had a non-healing Jones fracture. She did wonderful when we did the bottom of her foot and she had like 15 to 20 hours of relief and she was a bus driver. She was about 64 years old. And when she got up the next day to go to her, her bus route to get to the bus, she couldn't step on it. And what had happened is, you know, 99% of the time we are down-regulating inflammation, but there is some type of smart modulation with the way this body reacts uh, with this device, the way it reacts with the body. And in 1% of the time, it's starting that osteoblastic activity or creating that osteogenic formation. And, and this is what we found. And what we needed to do was bring her in, obviously, quicker and do another treatment to flush out that inflammation. But also, you know, we took an x-ray and we found that she had that little non-healing fracture. So we put her in a boot. We didn't stop the treatments. We actually didn't kick her out. 
of the practice. We kicked her up a level in how we were working with her. Now, um, this is a, a great way to look at, this is, I kind of figured it out with the knees as well after working with a 64 year old male who was scheduled for a regenerative stem cell procedure because he was diagnosed with soft femoral condyles. And after in late 50s, early 60s, we're not getting the amount of protein and the amount of um, exercise needed to keep those bones nice and thick. And they start getting a little soft. And, um, you know, this is what they'll look like on x-ray. This is what they'll look like on MRI. It's chondromalacia. And it can happen when the articulate surface softens and breaks down. The joints of the body, body are lined with this smooth, firm cartilage that covers the end of the bones and reduces friction. But it's actually breaking down that periosteum. Again, it can happen in any joint. This is a perfect example in the hip. And this also had a, a labral tear. So again, costromalacia of the patella happens a lot where it starts to soften the back of it. And who knows that test you can do where you kind of lock the patella and then have them squeeze the quads. Do you remember what it's called? Anybody? Anybody? Matt, he's young. I think it's called Hoffman's test. I'm not positive though. But that's what we want to be looking for. Um, and again, what is chondromalacia? It's the joints of the body are lined with that smooth, firm articular cartilage that covers the ends of the bones. This cart cartilage acts as a shock absorber and allows smooth motion between the ends of the bones. When the hips move, chondromalacia occurs when the articular cartridge, cartilage softens and breaks down. What are other symptoms? Dull aching pain could be in the hip or any of the joint, pain that worsens with activity, Stiffen stiffness and pain after periods of inactivity, creaky sounds or crepitus, grinding sensations when you move your hip or any joint, uh, swelling and inflammation, and then catching of the joints or difficulty moving past a certain endpoint. What causes it? Factors that may contribute to this are just normal wear and tear of aging, right? Overuse um, from sports and repetitive motions, trauma, such as a fall. I took a bad fall three weeks ago on marble floor on my left greater trochanter. I thought I broke my hip. Felt, I felt like Bo Jackson. I'm like, uh, that's it. I'm done. Um, but over the last three weeks and a dozen soft wave treatments, it, it, it's like I'm back, right? I'm not, I'm not jogging or running, but I can, I went to the range today and didn't have any pain. Um, so injury to the cartilage, right? To that meniscus imbalance in muscle strength around the joints infections or bleeding, and even um, certain types of cortisone. This, many of you life graduates will know this guy. He's been at Life University for almost four decades. His name is Dr. Mark Schneider. And he was the one with these mushy condyles. And the regenerative orthopedist wanted to go in and drill holes into the condyles and then inject stem cells. It was going to be $12,000 a knee. Okay. And let's see what happens. $12,000, $24,000. And there's no guarantees. It's invasive, right? What do we say in the algorithm of healthcare? We don't start with the most expensive, most invasive. We start on the opposite end and we're going to use every conservative option we have, especially soft wave. And we're going to give it anywhere from six to 10 treatments. If you don't notice a difference after the third treatment, fourth treatment, if they're not, their pain isn't cut in half, if they're not starting to see what I call the WD-40 effect, where it's like WD-40 for these tired and arthritic joints, then, then there's something more serious going on. Yeah. All right. So this is him walking before soft wave. Come back, just show me how you're walking. Yeah, this John Wayne limp. You got a little John Wayne to you. I like that. Partner. Okay. Now, 
we did three and a half minutes of soft wave. That's, it was probably 400 pulses. Okay. And this is, this is the new animation that I brought back from Germany. I think it's pretty cool. Let me see if I can move this and if it works. What's important about this is the depth of a soup can, right? That light blue area is all a positive biological effect. The real sweet spot where some serious healing happens is in that red zone. Did you guys see that? So important to understand that concept. So there's a positive biological effect in that soup can area, but right in the middle of that red zone, is where the magic really happens. So you got to think about how deep their pain is. If you're working on a 350 pound uh, offensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys and their pain is deep in that foramen, you got to be at that 15, 16 level and, and to get down deep enough. Okay, so he was very skeptical. Look at him. And this is him. All right, Mark, go ahead. Walk all the way down, all the way down like you did. What did what, what, you say? There's zero pain in there. Zero pain. Isn't that wild? How many years have you been a chiropractor? Uh, well, almost 40. 40. Mm. It, do a squat. So, uh, again, what just happened there is we didn't heal the bone. We flushed out that inflammation and then we actually hit that reset button for that whole healing cascade that will happen. Now, I knew with the soft bones, I was going to see him two days later. And then I saw him once a week for four weeks. And literally after five weeks, he was 90% better. And he avoided having that surgery. And he literally comes in once a year now to maintain it. So, you know, what have we learned? Osteoblastic activity can lead to pain as the bone starts remodeling and, you know, progresses through that osteogenic type of activity. This, if you guys don't have this, anybody that's on here tonight, I will send this to. This is beautiful and you can add your stuff to it, but I think it's the best addition of uh, or the best display of what we're doing, especially as chiropractors. So um, let me see if this works. I hope it does. All right, so um, that's really it, what we have tonight. 
let me know if you guys, if I can still see you guys. Everybody's still there. Good to go. Any questions? Let's go ahead. You guys can all ask anybody to unmute. Any questions? Go ahead and raise your hand or unmute yourself. Let me see if I can unmute you guys. Who would like to unmute? Any questions? Drew has a question. Okay. Go ahead, Drew. I was, I was just I was trying to figure out how to unmute. I hit try to hit unmute, hit raise hand. But anyways, it all it all gets the same. Um, how do we get those animations or those that those last animations? Can you email those or where can we find them? One of them, um, the last one I can give you, and I think it's a beautiful thing to use on your um, on your social media channels. And it really gets, I believe, uh, oh. I, I believe is a really good message for our communities, right? So yeah, I can I'll, I'll really... the the one that does the electrohydraulic. I'm I'm waiting for permission to be able to share that, but everything else, um, mm. I'll, I'll share tonight. Okay. Jason, you got a copy. I'll get you a copy as well, my man. And if I don't have your, Jason, I have your email. Um, most of you I do. If I don't, Nicholas, I'm not sure if I have yours. If you guys would be so kind, you can text me uh, to this number and I'll give that to you in a second. All right, with that being said, if there's not any other questions, go out there, keep up the great work. Um, and we're so grateful. A big shout out to Drew, who just added a second device uh, in the Wilmington area, and uh, they're carting it between two offices. So I'm sure there'll be a you'll 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 have a third one in no time. <laughs> so I hope so. All right. Well, any other questions? If not, um, Nicholas, send me a little thing. Mike, Matt, uh, Shulke, I think I have your email. If not. Send that to 404-402-1903.